And uh, currently in uh, downtown Haverhill, we have a temperature of 66 degrees. And that is our latest look at what we have for the news and the weather. And good morning and welcome in. This is Win for Breakfast, and we have a guest today, Tim O'Connor, Haverhill High School football coach, who also is the uh, coach for the junior football program in Haverhill. And Tim, uh, welcome in. Thank you for uh, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. So, so get let me get this right. You are all football in the fall. I am, and my <laughs> wife despises it. But it is me, and that's who she knows. And I've been doing it since I've been twenty three years old, and now I'm forty four. And I don't know what a fall's like without football. Well, I, I understand what you're all about, and. And uh, we just uh, briefly had a chance to chat, but you're not doing the Haverhill Hitman. No, I'm not doing the Haverhill <laughs> Hitman. Uh, I'm a little too old and out of shape for those days. <laughs> well, you could play on the line. <laughs> <laughs> I could, but I, 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 I like my knees the way they are at this point in my life. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, when you were playing football, were you a lineman? I was a lineman. Okay. We gave that away. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> you you look like a lineman. Yeah, it's not my slender build, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I bet you were a good one too. I was okay. Did you uh, did you play the blind side? Oh uh, no, I did not. Yeah. I was a nose guard and a guard. Oh my gosh, that is uh, uh, doing football all all fall long and doing that. You must be a glutton for punishment. I am. Yeah. It was uh it was something that needed to be done. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad that you did it, and I bet your teammates were glad that you were doing it, too. We're talking with Tim O'Connor and uh, Haverhill High School football coach, but today he has his Junior Hillies football uh, T-shirt on. And uh, yeah, tell us about the youth football program. Okay, so about a year ago, uh, we started to notice that the culture and the program was hurting with numbers. And I always said to myself, I would love to have a middle school team as an extension to the high school team. Last fall, Finneolette, the rec department head, informed me that he was transitioning to retiring. So I thought I saw an opportunity to hopefully take over. So I talked to Vinny and a few other people, and we kind of did a joint venture last year to get us going because we knew how long it was going to take whether it's getting the 501c the fundraising the paperwork the legal part of it the core reforms so we kind of did a joint venture last year and we had some bumps in the road but overall we got through it now this year we're officially a 501c we have donations coming in we already have 55 kids signed up for seventh and eighth grade we start next monday we've ordered brand new uniforms we have donations from Everyone from Attorney Laflem to the Haverhill Fire Department to other local businesses, and we're pretty excited. And the head coach is Chris Farrell. He's a local guy. Uh, he came to me with this idea a few years ago, but I wasn't mentally or physically ready to take that on yet because I can tell you it is exhausting. I imagine it is. Now, gosh, uh, so you got to take care of uh, 55 kids. Well, <laughs> so what happened was we created a board of directors. I am a member of the board of directors with other local people who have a vested interest in Haverhill Youth Football. And hopefully by teaching these student athletes earlier on that culture, nurturing, grades, that all matters and that's what transitions to us at the high school along with teaching them some fundamentals uh, uh, at the youth level. Okay, so you mentioned that the the, uh, the practice is going to be next week. We start; they start Monday. Okay, and uh, where do they practice? There's going to be a combination of the Haverhill High Fields at the high school, and then as soon as kind of Labor Day hits around, softball leagues are over. We'll be at Riverside practicing a couple of nights a week. Oh, okay, that'll work out really well. Yes, we have lights. The sun starts going down. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Now, now uh, the uh, program, they, they play within themselves? Nope. So we are part of the Northeast Junior Football League, which there are a total of 18 teams from Lowell to Timberlane to Andover to Bedford, New Hampshire, and it's a travel team. So we play eight games, four at home, four away. Uh, I, I saw the schedule the other day. I think we have to go to Oyster Bay. That's a little far, but we'll travel. And, you know, it's it's bonding. It's 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 a nice little trip, and it's right outside of Portsmouth, and get the kids outside of Haverhill for a little bit, and see what it's all about. 
Wow. So some of these kids, they probably uh, this is their, their long trip, isn't it? I would not doubt that. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, so the, you're talking about a 7th and 8th graders, so you're looking at 13, 14-year-olds? Yep. Okay. We are. All right. Which is uh, a very unique age. Having taught that age before in the past and dealing with it, it's... Uh, it's very fluid, yeah. the emotions <laughs> on a daily basis. Yeah. Now, do you know uh, where uh, people are uh, going to be playing as far as the positions go? Oh, no, no, no. We, so what happens is there's, there's basically one team, but inside that team there's a, a varsity team and a junior varsity team. So players who need to develop more will play on the JV game. So everyone gets plenty of playing time. And so hopefully with 55 kids already signed up, you know, 26, 25 on each team, they, everyone will get plenty of playing time. But oh. we don't know until we figure it out. Yeah. That's, yeah. On, that's on the youth coaches. I have to, I wear with high school kids. <laughs> but I'm down there watching to see who my next quarterback is, who my next Tommy Morgan, Brogan, Brogan McGovern, the Chance Brady is. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have to. In fact, uh, uh, when you, you were telling me about uh, you know, your background, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's the feeder program right there. It is, you know, but it, it's a feeder program for anyone. It could be a feeder program for what do you tech, you know. I just, I, now, ideally, if you're a great football player, I'm going to make sure I put my arm around do an awful lot and say hello but ultimately if a kid wants to go to Woody Tech to be a plumber go Woody Tech to be a plumber I'm not going to stop you no but once again I'm going to say hello to you an awful lot <laughs> well that makes a lot of sense now is it too late for kids to sign up nope uh but we are going to be creating a waiting list probably soon and I can't promise at that point because ideally our goal was 45 and we exceeded that about two weeks ago and and unfortunately and financially, we only could sustain it so much. So, you know, we kept costs down. It's only $125 per kid. And basically, they're getting a shirt and T-shirt. I provide everything for them. The only thing they have to worry about is basically their own cleats and oh. a mouth guard. So to cut costs and keep things manageable for the first year, not you know, so we just kept it at 55 and 125 per kid. Oh, well, that's, I think that's very reasonable. I think so, too, considering what we're giving them and, and the quality of coaching. Everyone's a certified coach, sending out equipment. We sent out all the rec equipment I sent out to be reconditioned, cleaned, washed. Nothing's free in life. No, and I'm trying to teach that to some of these kids and these coaches now. They're like, oh, just, just go buy eight more helmets. Okay, eight more helmets at $200 a pop. We have to figure this out. That's right, yeah. Now, how much, yeah, to, uh, to outfit one player... Uh, what's the the pads, the uniform, the helmet? Uh, if I had to guess, ballpark. Don't hold me to a number per kid. Comfortably, about three hundred. Oh you know, gosh. you're figuring refs on a Sunday. You need a trainer there on a Sunday. You open up a stadium, cleaning people's not nothing's free. So that's why we fundraise. We did a great job. We've had, like I said, some great people in this community, and, and Hable's been very supportive, and hopefully we'll continue to get more support. Yeah. Now, do you have any more fundraisers lined up? You know, there, on, our, on our webpage, HableYouthFootball.com, there's a donations tab. Uh, we know we're hitting local businesses. We're hitting the sub shops up now. You know, we're looking for people who might want to sponsor a player for a kid who can't afford it. Uh, we're looking for small donations for anything from, you know, buying some practice pants at $10 a pop to whatever someone's willing to give. Mm hmm all right. Well, we're talking with Tim O'Connor, and he's uh, the hat that he has on right now is the Junior Hillies football program. Um, once again, WHAV is going to be doing Haverhill High School football on the radio. Um, and uh, tell us a, a little bit about this year. Uh, well, well, I'll get to see Tommy Morgan again, my, my one of my first quarterbacks, and great kid and great family, and Mr. Paul Ryan, who's been very helpful with uh, gaining some support with the local community and fundraising. Uh, the, the football team should be okay. Um, I don't want to knock on wood or anything, but we have some talent and we, we have some size and we're seasoned and uh, I, we, we kind of rebuild the past few years yeah. and uh, we have quality kids who uh, this year bought in from the start and hopefully that transitions into some more success like we had a few years ago. Now have they uh, started up the, their practice yet? Uh, we do not start practice officially until August 16th, but equipment handout for the high school is on August 14th. Okay. All so right. we'll, I'll be uh, officially, my wife will become a football widow next Wednesday. <laughs> As she likes to put it. She might be crying. Listen to this right now. Well, hi, Jacqueline. Hi, kids. <laughs> 
It's only 12 weeks. <laughs> it's only 12 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. <laughs> Bring them with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Tim, I t- this is uh, fantastic. We'll have to get you back if we can do that. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, so the, the first for the uh, Haverhill High uh, football program, the first game is like uh, September 14th Is that or a so? Saturday? Yeah, I yes, think so. September yeah. 14th is a Saturday. We're playing 2 o'clock against St. John's Prep, uh, who is the returning ah. Division One state champion, uh, and hopefully will not beat us up as bad as they did last year. But piece we're a little bit bigger and better this year. Yeah, we'll piece compete of cake. a little bit this year. <laughs> piece of cake. Yeah. Uh, they can recruit, though, can't they? Yes, they can. <laughs> but, I, but I have a middle school team now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll take a year or two, but it's coming. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. All right. Well, we're going to tell folks all about the uh, the Haverhill High football program, and, and uh, we'll do uh, and it's. I'm glad that uh, that you have the the travel team for the uh, for the junior football program, yep. and um, and that is a, a good thing, and that's easy to follow too. It is. Yeah. They play every. They're gonna play every Sunday or Saturday night at Trinity Stadium. Uh, you know, they're, they're they're my future. Yeah. You know, I, and I said that to them. And we have a, f- a meeting uh, on Thursday night with some parents. Kind of lays down the the guidelines for the year and. The coaches will be there, and I'll say hello. But you know, I'm I'm there. I'm I'm a figurehead. I started it with a few other people, yeah. but uh, it's going to take a life of its own. All right. Well, Tim, is there uh, a good way to get a hold of you if anybody wanted to uh, call up and say I'd like to make a donation? Yeah, I just think if you go to the website HaverhillYouthFootball dot com, this is donations tab there. You know, on on Facebook Haverhill Football Boosters, on Twitter at Hilly Football. Uh, we're, we're everywhere. We, you know, it's a social media world. Uh, I just haven't got to Instagram yet, but someday I will. And uh, the kids, the kids appreciate everything anyone can can help support them with. Well, I think yeah, the Instagram is uh, is an easy thing because that way, uh, it's uh, well, people get a chance to to see what it's all about, and then they can make up their own mail you know, story. We st- what we started doing last year was helpful. We have an app uh, that you can get through Apple or. Uh, the droid system, uh, Hilly Football, and we have uh, there's a tab there for the Junior Hillies. There's pictures, there's videos, coaches' pictures, uh, live game in, uh, updates, oh, score wow. notifications. So hopefully, we can expand on that this year too. And every every team will have their own section on the app, so parents can go and follow scores, live updates, and all stuff. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of it's a lot of leg work. Yeah, it is, and that's why your wife's a football widow. Yes, she is. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Tim, again, uh, thank you, and uh, and we'll be seeing you around. Well, thank you very much. All right, Tim O'Connor, who is on the uh, board of directors for the uh, Haverhill. A junior football program, also the head coach for Haverhill High School. Our guest this morning here on Win for Breakfast in the Wave 97.9 WHAV FM. Boston stations aren't tuned into the Merrimack Valley, but you are. 97.9 FM has your local wave weather around the clock. Keep it here on 97.9 FM WHAV.